Hello, I'm Greg. Welcome to my channel, Midnight Oil Software. In this video, which is a response to a request from one of my viewers, I'm going to show how to use these animated tune numbers. This is a really cool asset from the Unity Asset Store. You've got uh, these cartoon numbers with some cool animations. Um, I've been using them in a couple of projects. In particular, there's an education project I'm working on for Legends of Learning. And I posted a little short video of the gameplay for that to my channel. And one of my viewers has responded and requested that I make a tutorial showing how you can make um, a game where you use those animated numbers to display the score. So in this case, the score is zero. And let's say we say the score changes to 10. You see the little one runs on there. If we say we make it 100, or I'll make 110. You can see another one runs in there. If the score changed to 250, these numbers will run off and new numbers will run on and so forth. So I thought that's a pretty cool idea. It sounds kind of neat. Uh, so I thought I'll rip up a little prototype on how to do that. And then I will show you how I did it. Uh, one thing I noticed is these seem a little bit dark, so we could probably play around with the lighting a little bit or the materials to make them pop a little bit more. But nevertheless, I think this demonstrates the idea that the viewer had in mind when he made the request. So as I mentioned, I'm using the Tune Numbers asset. So the first thing I did, obviously, was import that asset from the Unity Asset Store, and it put it in this Tune Numbers folder here. And it comes with a number of prefabs, for the different numbers and even mathematical symbols. We're only using the numbers uh, in this project, but I like the, uh, the one variations. You can see for each digit, there's a number of different variations. So here I'm using zero, one, and then there's one, one, two, one, three, one, and so forth. Um, basically what I did, if you look at my project, I have a prefabs folder and I have a prefab for each of those digits and I've added a script to it called tune number. Now each of these prefabs already comes with an animator and if we look at the animator controller, go ahead and drag this over here and expand it. You can see there are a ton of animations on this controller. So there's a bunch of idle animations, as you can see right there. There's two run animations. Uh, that's really all I'm using in this project, but you can see there's victory animations, there's defeat animations, there's a tension uh, series of animations, some hide animations, turning left, turning right, arriving. So you have them run and then do something special when they arrive at a destination. Uh, for this tutorial, all I'm using are run and sprint and these idle animations. And so if we look at my prefab, you can see I've got the different prefabs for the different digits here. But if we look at the actual prefab, that was actually the prefab for my score display. If we look at the prefab for the digits, you can see I've got what idle animations I wanna randomly choose from and what run animations I wanna randomly choose from. And then I have my speed at which the tune number is going to run uh, when I have them run on and off the screen. So the way I created these is I went into the prefab folder and I dragged one of them into the scene. See, I don't want to drag it into an existing prefab. I want to drag it into my scene. And then I immediately unpacked the prefab completely. So now it's no longer tied to their prefab. And then I created my own prefab. I dragged it into here and then I added, like I mentioned, the script. And I did that for each digit, all right? And of course I had to populate these guys here. And all I did was basically um, type these in manually. There's probably a faster way to do that, but I just went ahead and typed them in manually. So let's take a look at the script, the tune number script to see what I'm doing on the actual numbers. So they have a speed, which I'm setting to 10 in the inspector. And then I have my array of idle animations and run animations. These all can be set in the inspector. I'm grabbing the animator component off of this in a wake. And I'm also caching my transform. And I know you don't have to trans, uh, cache the transform anymore, but it's a habit that I've gotten into and I just continue to do it. I have a couple of public properties. I have its index. So in the score, 
the digits go, I'm treating them from right to left. So if the score was 100, digit zero would be the rightmost zero. Um, index one would be the second zero. And then index two would be the one. So one, zero, zero, going from right to left, that's index zero, one, two. I hope that makes sense. Um, and then I had the actual numeric digit. So one or zero through nine that it represents. And then I have an event that I will fire. So when it's running on or off the screen, I want to have an event that it will fire when it reaches its destination so I can do something when it gets there. So this is the run to function. It's a public function. It's a, got a target position, the index in the score, and then the numeric digit. And the only reason I'm passing these in is I'm going to save these as part of this object so that I can look them up as children of the transform. So my score display is going to have all these digits living underneath of them uh, under its transform. And I want to be able to look them up, get component tune number, and then see what their index and digit is. So make sure I'm grabbing the right one. So this is going to be important when I want to swap digits out for new digits. I want to find an existing digit, say, hey, run off the board, and I'll deparent it, and then I'll get a new one. And I'll show you that code after I get done showing you this tune number code. Um, the animations I'm triggering by calling crossfade on the animator controller. Uh, normally, I use parameters like triggers or floats or, um, yeah, basically ends, triggers, or float, um, Boolean. Usually, I would use triggers like... Uh, floats or ints or booleans. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to call them by name, which is why I have that collection of run animations and idle animations. And I just randomly get one. And this function is basically just doing a random range on the length of that collection. Right. And I'm going to pass that into crossfade. And then this is the duration it takes to crossfade from the current animation. So in our case, one of the idle animations to the run animation. I set the animator speed when I'm running to be two. So that's going to be twice as fast as a normal animation speed. And then I save off our index and digit values and set running to true. So an update, if we're not running, I just return. Otherwise, I calculate our distance to the target position. I'm only running on the X axis. So it's going to run on and off the screen horizontally. Uh, and if I've reached our destination, I will call the stop running function. Otherwise, I'm going to move towards our target position using our speed and scaling it with time that delta time. All right, so that's how I move. That's how I animate. When I get to the destination, I set running to false. I look at the camera. So when they're running into position, they should be looking at the destination. But when they reach there, we're going to look at the camera. So they're facing the player. And then I set our animation speed back to one and switch to one of the idle animations. And then I fire our on run complete event. So that's it for the tune number script. Pretty simple stuff. The score display, this is where the magic happens. And jumping back out into Unity, I just want to show you I've got this score game object here and I have a score display script on it. And it's got an array of prefabs, which are our tune number prefabs. And then I also want to have the amount of spacing between each digit and the score. And then this is the position I want the numbers to run to or run from that's off screen. So they're going to run in or run out to or from this position here. So looking at this script, you can see I've got my serialized fields here for my prefabs, our spacing and our off screen position. Um, I want to get a reference to our score manager. The score manager basically keeps track of our score and has an on score changed event. So whenever the score changes, um, I'm going to parse out that score into an integer, save it, and then I'm going to set call set score and that's going to fire our on score changed event. And we're going to subscribe to that event in the score display. So I want to grab a reference to that and in awake. I grab it and I subscribe to that event. And I also want to calculate the width of the cells by grabbing the very first prefab for our tune numbers and getting its renderer and then looking at the bounds.size.x. So I want to see how wide it is. And I'm going to save that off as our cell width. So, and on enable, I just call update score. This is also what gets called whenever the score changes. 
And this is where the magic actually happens. So all I'm going to do in here, if our score hasn't changed, is just return do nothing. I want to get um, a list of the digits that I need to add to the score and the digits I need to remove from the score. So you saw when I was demonstrating it, if a digit in a score changed, became different, it would run off the screen and a new one would run on in its place. So basically all I do is I roll through my score. Well, first of all, I convert the score to a string and I reverse it. So I want to look at it in reverse order because remember the digits, the index goes from right to left. So I take the string and I reverse it and I convert it to an array and I do the same thing for our last score string. So I want to compare the digits in our current score or the new score with the digits in our previous score to see what changed. And so I roll through all the digits in the score, compare it to the ones in the last score, and if they're different, I add the current one to the digits to remove, I add the new one to the digits to add, and I'm saving its index position and its numeric value as part of the score digit. So I guess I should show you the score digit. It's just a struct with two public properties or public members, uh, index and digit. So I'm setting them and I'm adding them to those collections. If I'm past the bounds of the last score string array, then I'm just adding new digits. Um, so I'm creating new ones and adding them there. Now it's possible, even though in my tutorial, I haven't demonstrated this yet, it's possible to go from a bigger number to a smaller number. And so you might go from a four digit score to a three digit score or so forth. Uh, in that case, I only want to remove digits from the score. So I handle that case here. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of a game where the score actually reduces, but it's possible. It could be a stat. You could use this for any number of things. Um, so then I roll through my digits to remove. I grab that transform child object for the tune number that's going to run off the screen. This really should be an error condition if I don't find one, but I'll show you how I find it. I use a link expression and I basically am looping through all the tune child, uh, tune number children in this transform. And I'm finding all the ones or the first one whose digit and index match the digit and index value of the score digit I'm passing in. So this is just shorthand for saying for each child uh, under my transform, get component tune number if the tune numbers index and digit equals this guy's digit and index, then return it. Um, but it's just a link expression to do all of that and basically a single line of code. Um, so after I get my tune child, uh, I deparent it. So I'm setting its parent to null. And then I subscribe to the on run complete event on that tune number. And then I call that tune numbers run to off screen position. And I don't care about these parameters that we're running off screen. For the digits I'm adding, I instantiate the prefab for the digit that we are having run on screen. It's going to transform at the off screen position. Again, I need to subscribe to the on run complete. Up here, this is going to call tune number off screen. For this case, it's going to call tune number arrived. Uh, and then I'm going to call the run to method. It's going to run to the position for this index in the score. Remember, the indexes go from right to left, and I will show you how I calculate that position. But I'm also passing in the index value and the digit value so that I can save them on the tune number so that I can find them in this get tune number child. So how do I calculate the position to display it for the correct index in the score? Uh, basically, I take the transform position and I add to it vector three dot left. So we're going to move left and we're going to move the cell width times the index plus the spacing times the index. So that will move it left as far as it needs to, to be displayed at the correct position for that digit in the score. Um, the only uh, difference between these two is if it ran off the screen, um, I want to deparent it and destroy the game object. If I'm running on the screen, I want to set it to be our child and I want to set its sibling index under the transform to be the current index in the score. I don't need to do this, but this will make it so when I look at it in the inspector under our transform, they'll be listed in the correct order. So that is all the code to make this work. So I'll demonstrate it once again. 
you'll see the zero run on. Let's do something like 1,125. And there we go. And now let's take off a digit and make it just 125. And there you go. So that's all there is to it. I hope you found that useful and informative. If you did, do me a favor and click that like and subscribe button. It really does help me to grow my channel and it helps with the YouTube algorithm to show this to more people. And I do want to show this to as many people as possible. If you have any questions or comments, you can either leave a comment below or better yet, go to my Discord server. I'll leave a link in the description. You can post screenshots and code snippets there and ask questions. And I or somebody else will be sure to get back to you. Also, if you're interested in that tune numbers asset and would like to use it in your projects, um, all you got to do is go down to the description of the video. I'll have a link there to the asset store entry and full disclosure. It is an affiliate link. So if you do buy it using my link, I will get a commission, which is a great way you can support my channel. And speaking of supporting my channel, in addition to liking and subscribing, uh, if you'd like, you can buy me a coffee. There is a link in the description for that as well. So thanks so much for watching and good luck on your game development journey.